Welcome back. The last part of annuity and perpetuity that I introduced is the, uh, the special case of an annuity where the cash flow lasts forever and that we call that a perpetuity. So because the cash flow lasts forever, we can enter the infinity symbol into your calculator. We'll have to use the formula when tackling perpetuity problems. The formula, thankfully, is very simple. Uh, if you're looking for the present value as of today, you take the cash flow that you receive starting in year one, which will last forever, divided by the interest rate. So one of the important things to realize is that the cash flow has to start at year one. And the present value that you computed is the value as of today. Let's take an example and, and see um, what does that mean and why is that the case. So let's say you have you graduate from some state and you become very successful and you want to establish a scholarship. Let's say you want a scholarship with $1,000 per year. So because this is a per year basis, this is your payment amount. So the $1,000 here is the payment. So this is the cash flow starting in year one. Let's assume that the endowment can earn 5% per year, so that's the interest rate. Yes, how much do you have to donate today? So how much you have to donate today means that you are finding the present value. So in this case, the present value today is equal to the cash flow starting in year one, so that's $1,000 divided by the interest rate. Remember we are using a formula, so we have to convert the 5% into a decimal. So divided by 0 0.05, and that turns out to be $20,000 today. So you may want to ask, so how does this work? How does putting aside $20,000 allow me to have a perpetuity? So let's think about it this way. If you have $20,000, If you have $20,000 and you earn 5%, that means you get $1,000 in interest per year. If at the end of the year, you take out $1,000, you still have $20,000 in the bank. So you'll be able to earn $1,000 each year, assuming that the interest rate stays at 5% per year. So, this is, uh, so a perpetuity is a case where once you establish the amount, you can, and you are spending just the interest, and you never touch the principal, then that endowment can last forever. And this is why the present value has to always start today. So you have to put the money in the bank at the beginning. And then at the end of each year, at the end of year one, you'll be able to take out the $1,000. And then you, the bank, since you earn $1,000 in interest, but you're taking out $1,000 to give out a scholarship. So at the end of year one, you will still have $20,000 left. You can continue this in year two, once again at year two, since your interest rate is 5%. So remember that an interest rate of 5% that allows you to earn another $1,000 worth of interest. And you're gonna take out another $1,000 to give out a scholarship. And of course, you still have $20,000 left. And you can keep going forever and ever. So that's how a perpetuity is created. And that's why it's very important that you put the $20,000 in year zero. Allow it to earn one year's worth of interest before you start taking out the perpetuity payment, which is exactly equal to the original amount, the present value amount times the interest rate. Next, I could took a uh, take a look at a problem that, combine, that combines different types of cash flow. So you have learned single cash flow, the lump sum, multiple cash flow, annuities, annuity deals, and perpetuities. So let's look at how we can combine them. Let's say we have a problem where we have a perpetuity that starts at year nine. Um, actually, the perpetuity starts in year 15, 
and you want to find out the value of that perpetuity as of year nine. So the best way to solve this problem is to draw this on a timeline. So the timeline for this problem looks something like this. You have a perpetuity of $1,400 that starts in year 15. So starting in year 15, 16 and on, you have $1,400. The interest rate that's relevant to this entire investment is 5.45%. You are interested in finding the value of this cash flow as of year nine. Now, there's no direct way to find that because we have a perpetuity. And we know that for a perpetuity, we can find the present value. And we know the present value for year one is equal to the cash flow starting in year, I'm sorry, cash flow in year zero is equal to the cash flow starting in year one divided by the interest rate. The difference here is that we don't have a cash flow that starts in year one, but rather we have a cash flow that starts in year 15. So instead of year one, we have year 15. So we, if we start taking out money, think of perpetuity as money that you're withdrawing. If we start taking out money in year 15, that means we must deposit the money into the bank in year 14 so that it can start earning interest. Remember the way we create perpetuity is we put the money in the bank, let it earn interest for one year, and then we start taking money out. So if we want to start taking $1,400 out, in year 15, we have to put the money in the bank in year 14. So we can find the value of this perpetuity as of year 14. We have the perpetuity amount, uh, payment amount is $1,400. Our interest rate is 5.45%. Remember, once again, we're using a formula, so we need to convert the interest rate into a decimal. That tells us that the present value of the perpetuity as of year 14 is $25,688. And once we have that information, then the rest of the problem is a lot easier. So in essence, we have an investment problem where we're interested in knowing how much that money is worth as of year nine, when an amount of $25,688 is put into the bank in year 14. So between year nine and year four, that represents our investment horizon. So how long is our investment horizon? So the time period between year nine and year 14. Five years, right? So we take 14 minus five, that give us five years. So that becomes our investment horizon. And we know the interest rate, the interest rate is 5.45%. And we're asked to find the value in year nine. Since in this investment horizon, year nine is the beginning of this horizon. So we're essentially finding the present value. And at this point, we can use the financial calculator to help us solve this problem. So once again, let's clear our calculator. We have $25,688, and that is in year 14. So that's at the end of this investment horizon. So that's our future value. Five is our investment horizon, and the interest rate is 5.45%. And we are computing the present value. So the present value as of year nine is $19,701. So in this example, we combine a perpetuity and a lump sum in deriving at the final answer that we wanted to find. And here we conclude the module on annuities and perpetuities.